Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I just want to say quickly thank you for all the support of my last Cyberpunk video. Today, I really just want to give you my thoughts, opinions, and impressions on the latest expansion. As you may have seen in my last video, I started a completely new playthrough going into this expansion. I even opted out of going into the area of Dogtown early on because I wanted to enjoy all the new changes that Update 2.0 had brought in. However, once I was permitted to go into the expansion from the game's point of entry, I allowed myself to explore what awaited me. Needless to say, Phantom Liberty provides more than just a district within Night City. It completely invests itself on the role-playing mechanics, new relic abilities, as well as the incredible cast of characters you spar with over time. I want to begin this video by explaining to everyone that I will not be spoiling any part of this expansion, so don't worry. What I will say is that I want to talk about what I enjoyed and what I hope to see CDPR do in the future with Cyberpunk. With that aside, Phantom Liberty has officially revitalized everything I loved about Cyberpunk 2077. It not only gave me more things to find and earn, but it also took an incredible story and managed to flip the script into something worth fighting for. See, within the base game of Cyberpunk, we learn that our character V is on borrowed time. But as soon as we start our journey into the district of Dogtown, we gain knowledge of a possibility of a cure. Within Phantom Liberty, we can learn of a way to survive with a little help from our newfound friends. Speaking of friends, we have a returning familiar face despite all the new characters within this expansion. Johnny Silverhand is back in action to help guide V towards a better understanding of what life can bring outside of the afterlife. Johnny is the focal point of the entire story and the expansion because of how he and V are actually linked through the relic. Keanu Reeves does an amazing job reprising his role once again, and I'll be honest, this time it actually feels a little bit more fleshed out and a little more personal to have him beside you. Another character you'll see a lot of in this expansion is Solomon Reed. He's voiced and modeled by the awesome Idris Elba. He plays an undercover federal intelligence agent who's caught in the middle of saving an old friend and trusting his new ones. His story in all of this is filled with his experiences in the world of espionage and as we learn more about him, we can see that some of his scars show more than others. Another character from this expansion that I instantly fell in love with was Songbird. Voiced by the talented Minji Chang, Songbird is a netrunner that works as an intelligence analyst for the new United States of America. Her talents as a netrunner is beyond anyone we've seen in the story of Cyberpunk 2077. She's also the person who tells us of a possible cure, which starts our very deep descent into the district of Dogtown. There's tons of other characters that you'll meet in Dogtown that expand through your quest lines and side jobs, all of which are unique in both personal looks and personality but I want to talk about some of the new events that you can expect to find within this expansion. Some of the dynamic events in the game allow for a more immersive experience within Cyberpunk now. Some even add ways for you to earn quick and easy loot, such as the vehicle contract missions. These contracted missions labeled just another story will be replayable, so don't worry too much about it. Although, if you net a delivery within the allotted time, or you don't damage the car too much, the rewards are quite worth it. Regardless if you complete the optional task, you'll receive rewards ranging from weapons, attachments, progression shards, and a discount on the vehicles that you can buy within the game. This can of course vary from job to job, but the rewards are always worth the trouble, especially if you're in need of some eddies, and believe me, you're going to want some once you explore Dogtown. Be on the lookout for the steering wheel icon on your minimap when you're driving around Night City. These icons will be over the vehicle that you need to steal if you want to take the chance on one of these events. But beware, they are usually guarded by rival gangs. Once you take control of the vehicle, you'll be directed on the drop point. Getting there in one piece, however, will be another story altogether though, so good luck. Another reoccurring event are these airdrop loot caches that are scattered randomly around Dogtown. An easy way to pick up on these events are the noticeable sound of the crate itself as well as the huge smoke signal that they create upon landing. Upon discovering this crate, however, be ready for a shootout. Most of the guards around the crate are packing a decent amount of firepower, but that's just because the loot inside is well worth the risk. The first crate I ever found actually gave me my first iconic weapon exclusive to the expansion, and more specifically, this airdrop event. Phantom Liberty has tons of new loot to find and earn, especially these iconic weapons. Now most of the loot that I earn, I usually dismantle for resources or sell for some eddies at one of the shops. Well, I hope you've been saving up because all the vendors in the district of Dogtown have unique loot that is well worth the price. Vendors all over Dogtown will have new items and some of those items are one-time purchases that will allow for more extensive ways to build out your character. These items can grant you permanent adjustments to your build giving you a more subtle but noticeable changes such as RAM recovery rate, stamina regen, and even a max health increase. 
There's also a vendor that sells progression shards for those that need a boost in leveling in a specific area. These are all somewhat expensive items that can be purchased whenever you have the money, but I would recommend holding onto your eddies until you visit a ripper dock. The Ripper Docks in Dogtown have some brand new cyberware that will change your build substantially. One of my favorites is the Axolotl cyberware for your front cortex. This allows you to instantly cool down your cyberware upon neutralizing an enemy. This does stack per enemy as well, so as long as you're being aggressive, you should notice all of your abilities coming back almost instantly. Even the Quick Hack vendors have upgraded to iconic versions of Quick Hacks. Some even changing the amount of RAM slots needed for a trade-off in damage output or specific actions upon activation. This made netrunning a little more diverse because of all the differences across the quick hacks themselves. So far, my favorite part of this expansion has been exploring the entire area of Dogtown. Guards are policing constantly and aren't afraid to shoot on sight. They're even equipped with more firepower than the average cop in Night City, and sometimes they're even accompanied by these heavy mechs. You can even see how diverse these guards are outfitted by scanning them and seeing their ranks within their faction. Exploring Dogtown has been a blast. Lots of interesting side quests lead you to hidden areas of the district, not to mention looking out for relic boxes to maximize your relic perks. The relic perks overhaul the new abilities even more. Some of these perks can even grant you some completely new ways of taking down anyone that stands in your way. Now, while I'd like to talk more about the story of Phantom Liberty, I don't want to rob anyone of that experience. CD Projekt Red did a terrific job creating an action-packed spy thriller that truly differs upon the decisions that you make within it. Along with their latest update in the game, Cyberpunk has felt amazing to return to after all these years. Recently, CD Projekt Red announced that even with all the success of this expansion and the update has brought in, they want to shift their main focus on creating a sequel to the world of Cyberpunk. Deep down, I really hope this means we get to see another viewpoint somewhere else entirely down the road. Seeing as how Night City is based in the California area of the United States, I personally would love to see an international location like Neo Tokyo, reminiscent of Blade Runner. The lore is expansive and diverse, so I know I'll be happy with whatever CD Projekt Red comes up with, and who knows, maybe we'll even get to see a season 2 to Edge Runners after all. But in all seriousness, this year has given us so many surprises in gaming. Tons of indie titles making huge waves, as well as AAA games finally clicking with the hype behind them. Cyberpunk was one of the most welcome surprises for me. This was a game that I played non-stop for weeks when it first launched, and now with the newest update, I've sunk in another 100 hours into re-exploring Night City and all it has to offer. Please do yourself a favor and give this another shot if you put it down. But if you're on the fence about Phantom Liberty, just know it provides content from multiple different avenues. This game is very different from when it first released, there's less bugs now, there's better performance, and there's a great set of bones on this game. I'm not somebody who likes to nitpick over every scrap of issues, even I encountered my fair share of bugs within this game. But to say that it isn't worth it would just be a complete lie to all of you. I love to make content around games that I enjoy and have a hard time putting down. This is just one of those games for me. For anyone who's looking for a first person shooter with diverse role playing mechanics and a wonderful world to get lost in, look no further than Cyberpunk 2077 and its expansion Phantom Liberty. Anyways, I'm gonna go look for more goodies within Night City. My name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care, Chooms.